My name is uh, Dr. Stephen Lowry. I'm with the, the Astronomy Group here at the University of Kent. And what I would like to talk to you today about is some of the research that, that I'm engaged in that involves uh, using images from, from the Rosetta spacecraft uh, to image a comet. Now before I go into detail on that, I'll give you a brief introduction to the kind of research programs that, that I'm engaged in. I think of myself as a, as a ground-based astronomer first and foremost. Uh, and I use ground-based telescopes um, down in Chile quite a lot, as well as space telescopes like the, the Spitzer Space Telescope uh, that's, that's in orbit around Earth. And I use those to study the, the, the icy cores of comets. Uh, I also use the same telescopes to study near-Earth asteroids. So I'm interested in studying the, uh, the physical properties and, and chemical composition of, of asteroids, particularly those that uh, come close to Earth. Uh, while I'm not doing those things, I'm working with the, uh, the OSIRIS imaging team, which is part of the, uh, the Rosetta project, uh, which is a space mission uh, run by the European Space Agency. And so that's the topic of the, uh, uh, the presentation uh, today. So why are we even interested uh, in studying comets? What, what makes comets uh, so important? To help answer that question, we have to go back 4.6 billion years ago to when the solar system was forming. So the solar system has started out as a, a very, very large, tenuous cloud of gas and dust that, that was rotating. Now, that cloud of dust probably experienced a perturbation of some kind, perhaps a, an exploding uh, star nearby. And that caused the cloud to collapse. Now, as if it's run initially rotating, then the collapse uh, the disk will collapse into a, uh, or the, the cloud will collapse into a disk-like structure, uh, like we see there in, in, in the lower left. So you have the material uh, forming a disk, and, uh, and the material is densest at the central part of that system, and that's where the protostar forms. All of the material continues to rotate around the central star, and within that material you get the planets forming. You have bands of material forming, and that's where the planets tend to form. Then. That process continues after about 100 million years or so, and then we see the solar system as it is uh, today. Now, the, the comets and asteroids that I study with my research program are really what's left over from, from, from that process. So by studying comets and studying asteroids, we're really uh, getting a lot of insight to, to what the solar system is like uh, when, when the solar system was forming. So that's, that's the main motivation behind this kind of work. Now, this particular model that I've talked about uh, we're fairly sure that that is, is, is how it actually happened. This is a, a really beautiful image, a recent image taken with the ALMA uh, Radio Observatory in Chile uh, that shows you this band structure in, in panel C here quite well. So it really confirms the, the, the initial model that we, that we think of how the solar system formed. Again, make, making comets and asteroids particularly important uh, for study. Okay, so everyone's familiar with a comet. Uh, so I'll take you through the basic anatomy of a comet. Everyone's familiar with the classical uh, dust tails, uh, the stream off the comet away from the sun, which would be in the lower left-hand part of, of that particular figure. Uh, also, part of a comet is, is the ion tails. These are charged particles that stream away from the, co uh, for, stream away from the comet in a direction opposite to that of the, to that of the sun. And comets are also surrounded by a, a tenuous atmosphere of gas and dust that, that we call the, the cometary coma. Now what I'm particularly interested in is the central icy core of the comets, which tend to be a few kilometers across. Those are the heart of the comet and give rise to the tails and uh, the spectacular comets that we see uh, today. And it's the comets, and uh, the nuclei of the comets, that tells us everything we need to know about early solar system formation processes. Given the importance of comets, there have been previous spacecraft visits to these bodies and has happened about five times in the past already. Uh, the first one was uh, by the European Space Agency Giotto spacecraft back in 1986. Uh, they flew by the, the very famous Comet Halley. And they took these, uh, basically the, the, these were the first images ever taken of a comet up close. That was followed in 2001 uh, with uh, Comet Borelli being imaged. Uh, and then that was followed up in 2005 by Comet 81 p Vil 2 uh, and then again uh, by Comet 9 p Tempel one through the Deep Impact mission. And then the last mission uh, was to Comet 103P uh, Hartley 2 And it also shows a very distinctive bowling pin or peanut-like shape. 
similar to the Comet Borelli and Comet Halley comet. So this is, very, this is a very important point. We're starting to see a picture emerge of, of how comets formed. And this is important uh, for later on in the, uh, the presentation. So we've had five cometary flybys to date. But what we really need is a comet orbiter mission. And that's where Rosetta comes in. So what is uh, Rosetta? Rosetta is uh, the next generation of comet missions. So rather than just fly by the comet, and just, you've just got minutes to take your data. What we would like to do this time is stay in the vicinity of a comet for up to two years to study the natural evolution of the comet. Uh, and so Rosetta uh, has been decades in the making and is designed to do just that. So this is a nice uh, drawing here of the, of the Rosetta orbiter on the, uh, the top left. And so in addition to staying within the vicinity of the comet for, for up to two years, uh, the aim is also to deploy uh, a tiny little lander onto the surface, which as we speak I I is there now. So Rosetta presents an opportunity to study comets in, in a way that's never been possible before. Okay, so after this 10 year journey that it took, we finally caught up with the comet. And the, the panels along the top were some of the initial images that we were able to obtain, the first resolved images at least. These were taken on the 4th of July, uh, 2014. So you can just about see the elongated shape of the comet, so it, uh, there was early indications that this may be a, another peanut-like uh, body. And then just 10 days later, as we were rapidly approaching the comet, uh, we could see a lot more detail, and you can see in the little movie at, at the bottom there showing the comet rotate. So it's very clear that uh, it has a very distinctive shape, probably the result of two comets coming together. But we're not sure about that just yet. We have to study the comet to see what actually uh, caused its, its formation. It didn't take long uh, to start sending back uh, very, very detailed images of the surface. And every time an image was sent back on a daily basis, we were just uh, in, in awe of what was coming back. In particular, the detail that we were seeing on the surface. These are a sequence of images from any anywhere from 2,000 to about 300 kilometers from the center of the comet. So you can see a, a very, very striking, bizarre world uh, that's covered in, in a range of features from uh, pits to craters. Uh, there's boulders all over the surface. There's towering cliffs. All of these things were, were new to us, and we hadn't seen uh, a lot of them in the kind of detail that we were now seeing. But perhaps the most striking thing, at least for me, was, was the very distinctive uh, bilobed shape. Now, I've got a little model here that shows you that. So hopefully you can see there's a, the comet's made up of a very large uh, component here. And then sitting on top of that is a smaller one that we, call, that we call the head. So that poses very, very interesting questions. How did, the, how did the comet get to have that shape? Another important feature that we saw on the southern hemisphere of the comet was very, very smooth planes. Again, we don't know how these formed, uh, but we're in the process of, of trying to do that now. We can see very, very large boulders strewn throughout the surface. Again, we don't know how they got there or how they formed. Uh, some of them are up to 40 meters across, like the famous Cheops boulder shown in the, uh, the inset on the lower right. The presence of these boulders in such smooth planes tells us something about uh, processes that are happening on the comet that we can have a chance of unraveling. Some other highlights include the apparent detection of a crack between, between the two lobes, the large one and the small one, right across the neckline here. This little inset, uh, these arrows indicate the position of the crack, and then the, ins the inset in the upper right uh, shows you where the crack is in relation to the rest of the comet. So could that be an indication of the, uh, that the comet's about to split? And we're all excited to, 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 to see what actually happens to the comet and whether that happens or not. And comets do tend to split. So we have an opportunity to see that process happening up close. Uh, we also got to see the onset of the jets and tails. Okay, So we got to see the comets up close uh, and to see how uh, the jets and the tails are being produced right at the surface. And this is a spectacular image uh, showing a, a range of jets uh, all across the sunlit uh, part of the comet. And another unexpected feature that we saw were uh, aeolian or wind-driven features on the surface. We don't expect to see uh, sand dunes. Well, we call them sand dunes, but they're dunes, but we don't know whether what they're made of just yet. Uh, so we see these dunes across the surface. So clearly there must be wind or wind-like 
uh, behavior streaming across the surface to, to produce these features. And we think that's fascinating. The boulders on the right uh, show streaks, uh, which also indicates these, these wind-like features on the surface. One of the more important uh, scientific findings of the mission uh, relates to the, the detection of globules. What we're looking at here in the left is a, uh, a detailed picture of one of the deep pits on the surface of the comet. We're looking at the far wall of that pit and hopefully you can make out uh, spherical uh, globules on, on that wall. They're about three meters wide. Now we think those are the original building blocks of comets. And while we expected to learn quite a lot about how comets formed from these images, we didn't expect to see such direct evidence of, of the original uh, building blocks, if that's what they proved to be, but we think they are. So that's very, very exciting. Okay, so one of the major questions that arose when we first realized that the comet had this very distinctive shape was how did it get to have that particular shape? Was it a, a process of sublimation of gases and, uh, and uh, co combined with erosional processes? Or was it a merging of two separate comets uh, at some point in its distant past? Well, we believe we, we have the answer to that question. Now this is a very, very new result for us. Uh, and so how do we go about doing that? Well, what we did was we mapped the entire surface in, in, in meticulous detail. And we looked for signs of, of layering, stratification uh, across the comet. And we did actually see that all over the comet on, on both the, the, the large and, and the small lo lobe of the comet. By mapping the, the entire structure out, what we actually saw was that the two lobes of the comet had their own independently formed onion-like layered internal structure uh, to each of the lobes, which is quite amazing. And hopefully the figure in the lower right, which is a cut, well, just a cut right through uh, the comet, and hopefully that shows you the layering uh, a bit more clearly. So hopefully you can see the, the dotted lines, which indicate the orientation of the layers within each of the two lobes. And so that tells us that at some point, each of the two lobes formed completely independently. And after having completely formed, they merged through a very gentle collision, probably a few meters per second. And that's quite, a, quite an amazing and startling finding because that's completely different to any other model uh, of how we think the solar system is forming. We didn't think that the velocity would be so small. And so this is just one of the many uh, interesting results that Rosetta has revealed to us and will continue uh, to reveal to us uh, throughout the rest of the mission. Thank you uh, for your attention.